Hey Wildcats, today we're going to journal page 31, Radical Expressions and Radical Exponents. Properties of nth roots for a is greater than 0 and b is greater than 0. Product property of roots. The nth root of a times b is equal to the nth root of a times the nth root of b. The quotient property of roots. The nth root of a divided by b is equal to the nth root of a divided by the nth root of b. Rational exponents. The exponent 1 divided by n indicates the nth root a to the 1 divided by n equals nth root of a to the first power. The exponent m divided by n indicates the nth root raised to the mth power. So a to the m divided by n is equal to the nth root of a to the mth power. Properties of rational exponents. Product of power's property. a to the nth power times a to the nth power is equal to a to the m plus n power. Quotient of power's property. a to the mth power divided by a to the nth power is equal to a to the m minus nth power. Power of a power property. a to the mth power to the nth power is equal to a to the mth times nth power. Power of a product property. A times b to the mth power is equal to a to the mth times b to the nth power. Power of a quotient property. A divided by b to the mth power is equal to a to the mth divided by b to the mth power. Okay, if you would finish up your notes. Now your notes are completed. Let's take a look at example number one. Okay, it says simplify each expression and assume that all variables are positive. Okay, so... We can write this as the cube root of 27 times the cube root of x to the 6th power. Now, the cube root of 27 is the cube root of 3 times 3 times 3 times this can be rewritten as x to the 6th divided by 3 well we know the cube root of 27 is 3 because 3 times 3 times 3 is 27 so it's 3 times x 6 divided by 3 is 2 so 3x squared okay and so it looks kind of messy. Let's try to straighten that cube root up a little bit. All right. Example two. So we can write this as the fourth root of 81 times the fourth root of x to the 12th power. Okay. Now, the fourth root of 81 is 3 times x to the 12 divided by 4 power. So that's 3x cubed. Okay, go ahead and finish up example 1 and 2. All right, example 3. Okay, so this can be written as a cube root of x cubed divided by the cube root of 7. Okay, which equals, that's x 3 divided by 3 power. Divided by, there's nothing you can do with this. So that's 3, 2, I'm sorry, actually, we can, we can write this as 7 to the 1 third power. Okay. So then that equals x to the first power divided by 7 to the 1 third power.
Now, you can't leave this in the denominator, but what we can do, okay, is this. We're going to multiply this by 1 divided by 7 to the 1 third power times 1 divided by 7 to the 1 third power. And the reason we would do this is for this reason. Well, first of all, x to the first power times 1 times 1 is equal to x. Oh, but wait a second. You can't do that because you're changing equations. So you actually have to multiply this by 7. And the reason why you have to do that is because anything divided by itself is 1. So basically what we're multiplying this is times 1 times 1. Okay. I think I don't know if I have enough room here. So I'm going to have to bring my work down here. Okay. So now here that's x times now when you multiply x once you add them. So that's 7 to the 2 thirds power. Okay, divided by one third plus one third plus one third is three thirds. So that's divided by seven to the three divided by three. So now this is x times the cube root of seven squared divided by seven. And the reason we did that is you can't leave a radical in the denominator, okay? So the last thing is x times a cube root of 49 divided by 7. Okay, let's take a look at example 4. Okay, so again, we're going to have the fourth root of x to the eighth divided by the fourth root of three. So that equals x to the eight divided by four. Now you can't have a radical in the denominator, so we're going to have to do what we did in example three. So we're going to write this as three, because that's a one right there. Okay. And I almost forgot there's a one right there. That's why we were able to do this is equivalent to that. Okay. So then this would be three to the one fourth power. So again, you can't leave a radical into the denominator. So we have to do what we did here. Okay. So this can be times three to the one fourth divided by three to the one fourth times three to the one fourth divided by three to the one fourth. Now we have to have four of them, so we have four divided by four, so we have one, two, three, we need one more. So times three to the one fourth divided by three to the one fourth. Okay, we're in our room, so we're going to move our work here. So that's just x squared times, that's one fourth plus one fourth plus one fourth, so that's three to the three fourth power divided by 3 to the 4 divided by 4th power. Well, this can be written as x squared times the 4th root of 3 cubed. Okay, divided by 3. Well, we know that 3 cubed is 27. So this is x squared times the fourth root of 27 divided by 3. Okay. All right, go ahead and finish up example 3 and 4. All right, example 5. When we have this, we can write this as the cube root of 
of x to the seventh power times x squared. Well, that's now the three cube roots of whenever you multiplying exponents, you add them. So it's seven plus two plus nine. So it's three to the x to the ninth power. And then this can be written as x to the nine divided by three. So this is equal to x cubed. Okay, example six. Now, if there's not a number here, we assume it's two. So there's a two here. So it's the square root this. Now, just like this problem, you can write this as the square root of x to the fifth power times x to the fourth. Now, remember as you're watching this video, if at any time you're really having trouble understanding what's in the video, you can always stop the video and then you can take the note with me doing the same examples in class. Okay. All right. So then this is the square root of when you multiply x to atoms, so 5 plus 4 is 9, so it's x to the ninth okay but this really leads you to a dead end okay let me show you another way to work through this problem okay so let's rewrite this i'm gonna put this one first so the square root of x to the fourth times the square root of x to the fifth. Now, this can be written as x to the fourth divided by two, and then times, I can rewrite this as the square root of x to the fourth times x to the first power. Well, this becomes 4 divided by 2 is x squared times, now I can write this as the square root of x to the 4th times the square root of x to the 1. Now I have x squared times, I can rewrite this as x to the 4 divided by 2 times the square root of x. Well, this is 4 divided by 2. So then you have x squared times x squared. And I can just write this as the square root of x. Now we can add exponents. So 2 plus 2 is 4. So now our final answer is x to the fourth times the square root of x. Okay, so go ahead and finish that up. Let me try to straighten that square root sign up a little bit. All right, go ahead and finish up that example. All right, now this one's unique in that we have a back of the page. So we're going to go through that. Okay, example number seven. Okay. Okay, so I can rewrite this as the cube root of negative 125 squared. Okay. Which is going to use this calculator, basically a 
until I get my four function calculator, just use this as a four function calculator. Parentheses negative 125 squared is 15,625. Okay. So this equals the cube root. Of fifteen thousand six hundred and twenty-five. So now you have to figure out cube. You have to figure out what number cubed gives you fifteen thousand six hundred twenty-five. So let's start with five. So five times five times five is one hundred twenty-five. That doesn't work. So now let's try ten times ten times ten. We know it has to be by fives because of the five in the end. Okay, let's try 15 times 15 times 15 is 3,375. So then let's try 20 times 20 times 20. Now you can see that we're getting closer. So let's try 25 times 25 times 25. And it's a little darker there. Okay, so you can see that 25 times 25 times 25 is 15,625. So the cube root of that is 25. Okay. Our example eight. This can be written as the square root of four to the fifth power. Okay. Well, that becomes the square root of four to the fifth power. would be four times four times four times four is 256. Now we have to figure out what number times itself gives you 256. So let's start. We know that, um, let's try two times two is four, that's too small. Four times four, six times six. We know it has to be by two. Eight times eight. 10 times 10, 12 times 12, 14 times 14. We're getting closer. See, 16 times 16 is 256. So this is equal to 16. Okay, so I'll go ahead and finish up example eight. All right. Now let's take a look at example nine. Write the expression by using rational exponents, okay? And let's go right, let's try that. All right, so all you're doing is, again, writing expression using rational exponents. So this is written as seven to the three divided by four. And you're done. Okay. And then this would be written as 11 to the 6 divided by 3, which that simplifies to be 11 squared, which equals, well, just leave it as 11 squared because we're writing as rational exponents. Okay. All right, let's take a look at example 11. Okay. Simplify the expression. Okay. Now, when you multiply, when the bases are the same, you multiply, you add the exponent. So that's 25 to the 3 divided by 5 plus 2 divided by 5, which equals 25 to the 5 divided by five, which equals 25 to the first power, which just equals 25. Okay, example 12, we're gonna do the same thing. So that's 36 to the three divided by eight plus one divided by eight so that equals 36 to the 4 divided by 8, which equals 36 to the 1 half power, 
which becomes the square root of 36, which we know is equal to 6. Okay. Example 13. Now this becomes 8. Now when you multiply, you add. When you divide, you subtract. So that's 8 to the 1 third minus 2 thirds, which equals 8 to the negative 1 third, which is equal to 1 divided by the negative exponent comes down to be a positive 8 to the 1 third, which is 1 divided by the cube root of 8. The cube root of 8 is 2, so this equals 1 divided by 2. Okay, so go ahead and finish up example 13. Now example 14, this is equal to 1. Whenever you have a negative exponent, it needs to come down to the denominator. So that's 1 divided by negative 8 to the 1 third, which equals 1 divided by the cube root of negative 8 which is equal to 1 divided by negative 2. All right, go ahead and finish up your examples and start working on your assignment and have a wonderful Wildcat day.